In today's video, we're going to go over where the market went this past week, whether we think the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you're definitely going to hit the subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, so if you trade that, definitely hit that subscribe button. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts right now, right? So I initially said that we are in short, and I'm expecting that we're going to have this 39.80 to 40.20 low by May 22nd. And that's based on the Dow Theory crash signal, where we typically fall anywhere from about 5 to 6% on the S&P 500 every time we get a top after a Dow Theory crash signal. Now, a Dow Theory crash signal is essentially just where the Dow US 30 diverges with DJT over a prolonged period of time. Once we find the top, from there, there's usually a very rapid sell-off that can be seven days sometimes, 10 days, or sometimes it takes 20 days. So this was based on that, where I was essentially saying about 20 days after the May 1st high, we'll likely sell off about 5%, coming down to some fair value gaps that are drawn out on the four hour chart, down here about 39.80, by May 22nd. We actually broke that high today. I wanna explain basically where I could be wrong, or there's a second part where I had been saying all this time that we need to sweep this high here at 42.09 before continue lower. And I kept saying that I was having this order at 42.20 that I was looking to add there to my short. But I thought once we made this top here May 1st and we sold off, I personally started adding back my shorts and, and getting my full short position right around these 41.50s area thinking that that was the high and we're now not going to break that high and we didn't actually get to that the high that i thought which was about 4209 going above there i thought that that was the high but all along i thought to myself like why would they stop just short of that previous february high and then go lower the obvious thing is let's take out all of those shorts before continue lower once we didn't get it on the cpi i saw we were weak on cpi and we couldn't even get up to 4180 from a positive CPI release. So I, I that was really what, what made me think that, okay, that's clearly the high because if we couldn't get above that 4209 level with good CPI numbers, then like that's it. We just, there's just a ton of weakness combined with a bunch of other factors. So we broke the high and I actually had to take some of my position off just because, just in case I'm wrong. So I'm holding 80% short and it's still a great size short for me, but I want to limit more uh, pain in case I'm wrong. So, you know, we'll have I'll have to cut more of the position if we do continue to squeeze higher from here. It's possible, but everything's pointing to us selling off real fast, real aggressive from here. Problem is, it could take another 20 days. So now we could be looking at about instead of May 22nd, it could be around June 8th, June 9th that we fall to about 4020. Instead of 3980 to 4020, it could be about 4020. Why? Because we're just going to take about 5% from this high here that we just made at 42.15 and go about 20 days out and we'll get to about June 7th, June 8th and we were, the target is about 4,000 to 40.20. So that's where I'll have to change this now and everyone watching is going to say, oh, I, you know, I really thought you said that. Well, this is, this is purely based on the Dow Theory crash signal. So we are looking at about 4,000 to 40.20 by June 8th. That's basically where we're at now. If we make another high, then I'm going to do another another countdown from there. And it could look redundant, it could look pointless, but if you backtest this, I've just backtested it plenty of times, and every time this does happen, there is a sell off. And you can go back and look through times. I, I went over a few in previous videos, so you might want to watch some previous videos. But let's look over all the other things now. So I will admit one thing I thought that would provide a lot more weakness to NASDAQ and ES is the dollar. So DXY has been doing exactly what I thought it would do, and it, that's been great. We're pushing up very fast after making this low here. This is on the daily chart for DXY. I said we were targeting the 103 area. We hit the 103 area. However, I really thought that once we saw that 103 area, we'd be considerably lower on ES and NASDAQ, but if you just look in the past five days or so, basically the dollar was sitting around here, uh, around these days, and we just, we've still mooned up and took up the high, even though the dollar rallied. Same thing goes on the NASDAQ. So I actually took a short at uh, 13,470, small size, uh, very small size, but I'm holding that position. And what I have to do is be stopped out if we don't, um, if, if today wasn't the high, then tomorrow I'll be uh, taking off the NASDAQ position. And I'm thankful it's smaller size because again, it's been just extremely bullish. Like I said in previous videos, very bullish. And I said that we likely won't get this 12,500 target. I thought it'd be 12,700, 
But again, judging by where we're at now, again, the, the target is gonna have to be moved now, and it'll be about 6%, because NASDAQ has been falling more, so about 6% in 20 days from this high would bring us to about 13,050. So now this is, instead of 12,500, we're talking about 13,050 by June 7th, by June 8th, by June 8th. So these are the two targets now, about 13,050 by June 8th, and then on ES here, we're looking at about 4,000 to 4020 by June 8th, and that's in about 20 days. So those are the updated targets based on the Dow Theory crash signal. Second thing I wanna go over was the VIX. So now we saw the dollars cooperating, we should see more weakness in ES and NASDAQ. We're not seeing that. So that's something that's concerning. If it continues, then it means that we're wrong and we're gonna have to cut the position. You know, we thought that the dollar would provide some weakness to ES and NASDAQ. It hasn't. This can happen and it could be delayed for a little bit. But if it continues, I'll have to cut my position and just admit that I'm wrong. Second thing is on the VIX. Now, I don't wanna see the VIX take out this low. I said in previous videos, I want the dollar low to hold and I wanted the VIX low to hold. So VIX a hold low is about 1550. We're coming down and we're, back, we're basically just back testing this area right here, about 1620. If we go even lower and take out this low, that's concerning for me personally, holding short, because that means there's more fuel for us to go even higher. However, if we push up from here, that's great news. But yeah, VIX has been weak, so that's another thing that's concerning. But uh, if you take a look at HYG, HYG is smart money, so what we're seeing, and this is one thing that's really allowing me to hold my short is Look at the extreme weakness on HYG. We're on the daily chart. This is extremely similar to where we were February 10th, 13th, and 14th. You know, this would be like February 10th, 13th, and 14th. So you see this extreme weakness. This we were basing and we broke down. We were basing back here and we broke down. After the breakdown, we started trading sideways. So it's bear flag. So we started trading sideways. Now, if you take a look at what happened on S&P 500, because this is the smart money flow. So it basically, it's high yield corporate bonds, it's appetite for risk. As this sells off, it's a leading indicator for S&P 500. Typically, uh, it's a delayed reaction where you know a few days later after we have a breakdown on HYG, S&P 500 tends to follow. So what this basically implies is, since we broke down and we're basing and we're holding below that 4210 area, it means that we're likely going to sweep the low that we set Thursday, May 4th. So if you take a look back at Thursday, May 4th, we go to ES. Thursday, May 4th, the low was 4060. So that means that we're gonna come to this fair value gap down here about 4050. That's basically what we're pointing at and that's just based on smart money flow and where we're likely to head. The second thing is we said February 10th, 13th, and 14th. Let's take a look at where we were February 10th, right here on mouses. 13th, 14th, 14th set the lower high. So I personally expected us to trade, you know, about 41.90 as a max and then really push down. I didn't expect us to break this high because if, you know, on HYG, we're right at, you know, the same positioning that we were Tuesday, February 14th. And that would be the lower high and we now continue to trend lower from here. So the true test right now is if we go even higher tomorrow and we go above the high we set today, that's a cause for concern. If we respect this high, definitely holding my shorts and uh, keeping stops just above the high we made today at 42.15. Reason being again, because I personally had the opinion that we, we have to sweep this 42.10 area before heading lower. And I just thought we weren't gonna do it. We pushed up and you know, we made sense that we did it. Now, HYG is so extremely weak that the divergence is so extreme, it's been drawn out to basically the, the maximum with DJT and these all these divergences have kind of been dragged out for as long as they have been in the past. So if we do break this high today at 42.15, then I'll likely close all of my short position on ES and on NASDAQ. And if we start trending down from here, then uh, I'm gonna be holding my short position targeting 4,000 by June 8th or 40.20 by June 8th. And then on NASDAQ, uh, if we don't go higher than the 13,900 that we're hitting right now, then I'm gonna be holding that short position targeting 13,050 from my 13,500 uh, entry average. So it's about a one-to-one -one risk on, on NASDAQ. The ES trade is a, is a two-to-one risk. So you know, only drawdown of about 60 points if we do take this loss. 
targeting a, a profit though of about 120 points so still two to one again if we break this high i'm gonna be closing that position so we're just gonna have to stay tuned and see what happens everything's pointing to us being good one last thing i wanted to go over was the put to call ratio so if you just take a look at the put to call ratio we have bottomed uh what's what's interesting is we made this low here of 0.85 april 13th to april 17th we pushed up and we started kind of trading lower now we have broke all highs but we're setting a higher low in the put to call ratio so what i said in previous videos is it's not really the greatest strategy to look for longs when the put to call ratio is very low at the 0.80 or 0.70 area because it tends to mark tops and it's not very really good to be holding shorts when we get to that 1.0 to 1.1 area because it typically marks bottoms now we are very close to this low I like that we've we've made a lower a higher low here on put to call ratio. I just expect us to now keep pushing up, and I expect us to keep pushing down in the market. And again, if these things don't get respected, and you know if we if we keep going lower in the put to call ratio, and we just keep going higher on S and P 500 in the coming days, then again I'm gonna have to uh, to cut the short. But that's basically what I'm looking at. To me, this looks like a short squeeze in the past two days just to clear everybody out. And now we can start to head lower. If we just took a look at how rapid the, the squeeze was on NASDAQ, big two day squeeze getting all the way up, taking out the August highs. So, you know, those past two days, actually today, yeah, just today we broke those August highs. So boom, stopped out shorts on NASDAQ. ES broke the 42.10 high. Boom, stopped out the shorts on ES right here, where we have this 42.09 area. Small little gap here at about 42.25. You know, we could get up to 42.25, but again, I'm gonna be cutting my short if we get above that 42.15 area because the divergence is so extreme where we're so weak on HYG. So I just wanna show you HYG one more time before we wrap this video up. I have the I have the divergences drawn. So if you just take a look at last time, last time we rallied about 4% from the low to the high on on S&P 500 from January 12th to about February 8th. So it was one month long and we rallied about 4%, okay? Then this time from about March 31st to May 18th, that's about a month and a half. We rallied just over 2%. So we rallied half, right? So it's, it's 2% higher. Last time was 4% higher. This time was 2% higher in about the same period. But on HYG, Last time, from those same periods, HYG Smart Money went down 1%, and this time we have gone down 2%. So, in my opinion, we are at the exact same spots that we were last time before we fell 300 points on the S&P 500 in a matter of two weeks. So, if you just see, you know, like I said last time, we went up 4% on SPX in one month, and HYG went down 1%. This time we went up 2% on SPX and HYG went down 2%. So ratio wise, it's about to, it's it's relatively the same. Pattern wise, relatively the same where we're trading sideways, broke down, bear flag, couple days. Trading sideways, broke down, bear flag, couple days. The big difference is with this bar here, we broke all of the recent highs on S&P 500, even though we're so much lower on HYG. And last time here, this bar, we broke down, but this bar, still respected the lower high that we set on the February 2nd. So that's one clear dis distinction. That's one thing that's different. Second thing that's different is the dollar bottomed and it's pushing up now, but we haven't been seeing the weakness in S&P 500 and NASDAQ. That is, is one thing that concerns me because every other time the dollar pushed up and we sold off. So, you know, it makes me think like something else is happening here because we should be going down as these other things go up because they kind of all work together. Again, those divergences can last a few days, but if they last longer than that, then it just means we're wrong. We're we'll have to cut the position. So, basically showing that, you know, pay attention to HYG. We, we should be going down. If I am correct, we should be going down from here. We're just have to keep a close eye on everything and see how things pan out tomorrow. See how we close tomorrow. Might have to close the position if we continue to push up on S&P 500. And we'll just have to be close, keeping a close eye on it. That's going to conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you had a great trading week. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Give this a video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.